Welcome to New Creation Woman. I'm Pastor Laura Lee of Media coming to you from Canfield, Ohio. And today I am so pleased to have two very special guests. We have Pastor Juan Caceres and his beautiful wife, Pastor Amy. And they are coming to us from Texas. They came to visit us here in Ohio. A little, little bit colder yeah, here. Yeah, it's kind of chilly here. <laughs> but thank you for having us here in this program. And thank you for receiving us all during these dates. And it's been wonderful to be with you here. Well, it is a great opportunity. It's an honor to have you mm -hmm. both thank with you. us. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and their church is called Casa de Dios. Abier Cielos Abiertos. Cielos Abiertos, <laughs> which means House of God, Open Heavens. Open Heavens, House of God, yes. yes. In, yes. in Spanish. In and, Spanish. And, and when we first met, it was like, oh my gosh, because we have almost the same name, because yes. our church is Touch Heaven. Mm. How did you come, let me ask you first, that, to get that name for your church? Well, uh, at the beginning, we were only thinking about getting House of God, because it was like, oh, this is a House of God. And we were not thinking about having something else, but then, uh, you know, getting with the Lord, praying and receiving some words that the Lord gave us, mm -hmm. He started like opening our eyes about walking actually in open heavens mm -hmm. and what that meant. So one day we tried like register the church uh, as a cast of the deals only and we couldn't. And the Lord like remind us, remember open heaven. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we couldn't, it's that God didn't want us That's to just right. register as the Casa de Dios. So we put it Casa de Dios Cielo Severto, which means open heavens, mm -hmm. house of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And what tell them where is your give the information your church oh, where yes. is that so people want to come visit the website yes everything, our church is located in uh, grand prairie texas and we have been there already for like 10 years wow and uh mm -hmm. it is, this is dallas area texas mm -hmm. and it's a uh, latino congregations even though we have uh uh simultaneous translation and we are planning to have it in english to english services and it's in grand prairie texas the address is uh for whoever is uh, around the area Please. uh 26 Oh six uh, North Highway 360, Grand Prairie, Texas. And uh, our website is uh, cddcielosabiertos.org. Uh, whoever wants to go, just find us in uh, you know, Facebook or YouTube as a Casa de Dios Cielos Abiertos, and they can see all the information and all the videos and everything that we have out there. And, and it's awesome. I have to tell you what a blessing it was to be in your church. The fire, just the fire of God was there, and the people are so hungry, and oh my gosh, it was like a beautiful experience. So I'm going to invite anybody who's watching, if you're in the Dallas area or make a trip. Yeah. It's a nice, we made the trip and it was wonderful, especially in the winter. Uh, mm -hmm. It's nice to go there because yes. it's not so cold. Mm -hmm. It's cold here mm -hmm. in the winter. So anytime the, the fire of God is in your church and, and on you too, it was just, it's and bad. the worship so anointed, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It, it was great to have you and uh, Pastor Fran when you guys came and it was a great blessing, a great word and we have a great experience too to have you there. Oh, praise and, and whoever wants to come, maybe this more than welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and they're exploding. Now you have two services, right? What time? Oh, yes. What time are your We service? have two services in our church because the, we have been growing since we started. Every year we have been doubling, and now we just moved uh, a few years ago to a new place, a uh, bigger place, and we already have two services again. We moved to, from the previous place because we were having three services. Oh, wow. And <laughs> now we have two services, and the first one is at 9.30, and the second one is at 11.30. Okay. So, and we're getting ready for the third one, but we'll announce that later and on. We're, and we're praying and believing for a bigger place. Amen, oh, yes. amen. amen. We're amen. believing for that, too. Yes. Thank you, thank amen. you. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. That's, that's the next plans for the next year. We're planning to move to another place. Well, I was so excited to hear that you were both born in America. Yes. yes. But then your families ended up in Puerto Rico, and you actually served in the U.S. military. You are a Marine. Thank yeah. you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Please yes. tell us a little bit about yourself, and then uh, I'll ask you to tell a little bit about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a coincidence because uh, we both were born in, in New York, but we didn't meet each other until we were like, uh, uh, in university. I was born in New York and my family, when I was like two or three years old, they moved back to Puerto Rico, which is still a territory of U.S. People forget that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it, yes. it is a part of the U.S. And we moved out there and my whole life I was uh, raised, raised there. And um, 
while I was there, uh, I didn't know English, even though we have English classes and everything. Growing up, when I was 17, I joined the Marines and I moved back to the States and went to boot camp, uh, training and everything and was there for five years, traveled around the world and then went back to Puerto Rico uh, when I was 23. Uh, and while I was going to school, I met this beautiful, beautiful. lady, yes, yes, yes. Uh, at the university. We both were studying together uh, six months in the same classroom wow. and we never spoke to each other until probably the last month <laughs> of the semester. And uh, we were in the lobby area and she had a friend that was a friend of mine and, and he was talking with me and she came to the conversation. That's how, that's how we, you know, everything started yeah. we, and we started a conversation and from there we started getting, you know, getting to know each other. But we weren't safe though. And when I was uh, maybe two years later, 20, that was in 2006, I was 25 years old. When uh, you first met? Uh, we were 24 oh, when, when we first, first met. met. Oh, okay, 24. And uh, we were in a relationship for a year or so. And then uh, we went to some uh, process in our lives, especially me, I was feeling that I was empty. Well, always I felt that, but nothing else could have filled that void that I have in my heart. And, but I already, my dad was already going to church. Oh. He got saved when I, when he was, that's another story. He got <laughs> saved. He was following with my sister. He was thinking that she was going to party, but she was going to church. <laughs> he entered the church and he never got out. Wow. And he, he got saved since that. Praise God. And I was 17 years old when wow. that happened, but I still not saved yet until I was uh, 25 years old. Okay. So back in Puerto Rico, I was boy. I, we still go, you know, party and do a lot of stuff that you know the Lord doesn't like. We're doing you know, a sinful life, but um, I was feeling empty, and I knew that I needed something else. I have traveled the world, have experienced a lot of stuff, but even though uh, I was empty, and, and you'd already been a Marine. Yes. You, mm -hmm. So you were done with your service. Yes, man. Okay. Yes, I got out in 2003. Okay. And the five, almost five years in the wow, Marine Corps. Wow, thank you again. And serving the embassies and a lot of stuff around the world. Thank you. And, but when I came back, I was, anything else that I was doing, it was not getting me in my heart, like, uh, uh, satisfied. Mm -hmm. So my brother invited me to church. And he told me that he was going to be in a play. Oh, okay. Yeah, which okay. I never saw him in the play, <laughs> but he was around, but he didn't do anything. And he did that just to... to get you there. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I got there in that day, I don't know, I felt something in my heart. I was crying just seeing the play. Mm. And I was like, wow, I'm crying. I never cry. And then it was like a, a seed that it was in my heart. And I wanted to, I was like, I wanted to be where they at. Mm -hmm. And I started visiting, but I still doing all the stuff that I shouldn't be doing. But I already I was like, uh, I, it, being a military is like, I'm either safe or I'm either in this side. Mm -hmm. So one, it was a uh, uh, Good Friday, uh, uh, Passover. He was celebrating Passover mm -hmm. in 2006. And I heard the message of the crucifixion. Wow. And I had a vision of Jesus being crucified. Wow. And, I, and I was like, mm -hmm. that guy, I mean, I wasn't safe. I didn't yeah. know anybody. Yeah. And I was like, that guy uh, died for me? And he's giving me eternity, and I want that. And I just walked in front of the altar and just gave my life. And since that, I was going to college. I didn't want to do anything else. I just want to be for Jesus since that. Praise God. Oh, so. Well, how about you? Were you, did you grow up in the church? Did your parents go to church? Uh, I grew up Catholic. Mm -hmm. I grew me up, too. you too? too. You me went too. to the Catholic? So, yes. So you, your parents took you to Catholic church. Then you met, you're, well, you tell, I don't know, and, and he can translate. If yeah. you would rather speak in Spanish, it's okay. You yeah. can speak in Spanish, he'll translate, whatever you want. Sí, yo crecí en, en, en la iglesia católica con mis papás este, hasta los aproximadamente 16 años. Eh, luego, pues, comencé la universidad y seguí, no sé si... Yeah, okay. she grew up in a Catholic church, mm -hmm. in like a me. very Catholic church. In front of her house, it was a, a Catholic uh, little church mm -hmm. that they were going until she was 16 years old, and all his, her family is a Catholic. Mm -hmm. Luego entonces comenzó la universidad y dejó de ir a lo que es la iglesia católica. Luego, como ya el pastor Juan les comentó, eh, lo conozco a él y comenzamos a salir juntos como novios. So, after 16 years old, she stopped going to uh, the Catholic church and, you know, start congregating, but then she met me, and uh, <laughs> and we started going out together, yeah. 
Eh, luego de una separación que tuvimos, este, siendo novios, estuvimos aproximadamente como 3, 4 meses eh, dejados, él comienza a ir a una iglesia y me invita a una iglesia cristiana. So, and then after we were together like a uh, year and a half, two years, something like that, and, but we got separate. And, you know, she took her own way, I took my own way. But we went to that process and I started going to church. And then uh, we were talking and I invited her to come to church. Oh, he invited you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Comencé. Él me invita y yo acepto la invitación. Y de ahí en adelante, a mis 25 años, le estoy sirviendo al, al Señor, lo acepté. Y, y de ahí hasta el sol de hoy. Pero sí, soy la primera cristiana creyente en mi familia. Yeah, so I invited her. And she accepted the Lord. She had a very, I'm going to add, she didn't say yeah, that, but I'm going to, she had a very uh, powerful experience with the Holy Spirit wow. after two weeks. Mm -hmm. And since that, she hasn't turned back and Christ. she gave her life to Christ. Yes. And she's the first in her family that become a Christian evangelical, you know, wow, as yeah. we know it. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. Yo comprendo. <laughs> <laughs> After 20 years in Miami, uh, un poquitito español. <laughs> and so then you got married and you mm -hmm. have beautiful children. Mm -hmm. uh, how many children? Tenemos dos niños, uh, eh, Juan Diego y Mateo. Juan Diego oh. tiene 11 años y Mateo tiene 8 años. Yes, we have two okay. kids. Yes. Uh, one is Juan Diego who has um, uh, uh, 11 years old. Yes. It just uh, turned 11. That's what I'm like yeah, thinking. Yeah, I say. Yeah, yeah. And Mateo, which is our youngest, is eight years and old. Beautiful, so, beautiful. Oh, yeah, they're a blessing. Yeah. And, and so you've been married how many years now? Uh, well, I, I, I'm going to let her say <laughs> that because I know if I say and say something 14. wrong, it could be 14, 14. 14. 14 years old. Yes. Yeah. And she also count the years that we were, uh, you know. That's OK, me too. <laughs> it's, yeah. That we met. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's true, because we were together. Yes. How many years together? Yes. She's like, 20, if we count, she's like, met you, it's together like 20, 20. years old. Wow. Yes. Okay. Like 20 wow. years old. 20. And th now tell me about the church. How did you end up starting uh, the church? <laughs> well, uh, when I got saved, uh, uh, I wasn't thinking about being a pastor, uh, but I just want to give my life to the Lord and do whatever He wants me to do. I mean, we got involved really quick in serving. We were like in the cafeteria, you know, church stuff. At that the you other do. church. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm, back yeah. in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yeah, we were there at that time. And we started serving immediately. She started helping with the, we were studying accounting. So, so she got uh, put to serve in the, in the accounting area of the church finance. and admin size and mm -hmm. the finance. And together we started serving the youth of the church and the community. That so that's how we started and, and doing a lot, a lot of stuff. Where, whatever was something for the church, we were there because we were like yeah. just hungry for the Lord. And then after, uh, five, six years, we have received a few words that we were going to be pastors. We were already in, uh, ordained as a youth pastors, uh, but we, know the, we knew that the Lord wanted us to uh, plant a church. So after six years in 2009 or 2012, I always told the Lord that uh, before I start church, I want to do like him. Before I start ministry, I want to do a 40-day fast. Wow, that's mm. a long time. <laughs> yes. Mm. Uh, okay. So we did it together. God bless you. Yes. Yeah. People in my job was thinking I was depressed because I didn't tell anybody that I was fasting. I got so skinny and they were like, invite me to, to eat food all the time and everything. It's like, I'm okay, don't worry. I was like, are you in depression or something like that? I'm okay, don't worry about it. And they didn't know. So the last week, uh, the last three days, I closed myself in, in our house and just were there just seeking the Lord. Uh, and the last, those last three days of the fasting, I had an experience with the Lord where uh, through vision and uh, an importation that I received, he told mm -hmm. us that he was sending us to Dallas wow. to start a church. Wow. And, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was something really powerful. And the thing is like that last day, that was uh, the 40th days on the, uh, at 6 p.m. in the evening when we finish our fast, I have a message in my phone and I had a job offer to go to Dallas and start work. Wow, yeah, <laughs> wow that's, that's the Lord. Huh? <laughs> so that's how we end up a few weeks later being in Dallas. What about you? Did you want to go to Dallas? Did you know people in Dallas? 
Bueno, no conocíamos a nadie, pero sí, yo estaba dispuesta a, pues, a seguirlo a él como esposo. So, sí, y me encanta Texas. Yeah, she's like, well, we didn't know anybody in Dallas. <laughs> and never been in never. Dallas before. No, no. no. Wow. And not in Texas either. No. 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 Wow. And she said, like, well, but I'm his wife, so I, I'm, I was willing to follow him and go with him. Yes. Uh, and obey the Lord for yes. this new uh, season of wow. our life. Wow. So, and we obey, and because of that job, because I told the Lord, you can send me anywhere, but I have faith, but at least give me a job wherever <laughs> I go. Yes. So, he used that door uh, as, the, as an editor in Dallas uh, to start working, and a few weeks later, that was uh, in the middle of February 2012, and on April 16, we were in April 18. Of 2012, mm -hmm. we were in uh, Dallas, Texas. That fast, wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. moved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, God bless you. In that you. same year, uh, October 12th uh, of 2012, we started, well, she was pregnant oh, with yeah. our son, Juan Diego, mm -hmm. from Puerto Rico. Uh, we moved there. He, he was uh, born in October. And that same month, we started with one family because I, I, I told the Lord, if you have just one family, I don't know nobody here. But if you just give us one family, uh, we uh, can start the church because we believe that you can do enough with only one family. Mm -hmm. And you started in your house. When yes. we started actually in their house in because their house. this family was asking for, they just got safe and they were asking to have a study group in their house. So I was chose <laughs> to do it uh, by the pastor of the church that we were going. And that's how everything started wow. in their house and in, in the apartment complex, they have a laundry room and that laundry room was for, full of trash. But the, the husband of the lady that we were in the house uh, doing the study group, he worked at that apartment complex. And the administration let him use the laundry room. So we cleaned that laundry room, put out all the, every the equipment that was there, <laughs> clean it, put uh, 30 ch plastic chair, and that was our church. That's wow. how we started over there. In the laundry room. In wow. Yes. That's all. Yes, we make a joke, <laughs> you know, we were like over there so the scenes could be washed away. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> the people who came there. Amen, <laughs> amen. So how long did you meet in the laundry room? We, were, we, we knew it was a step of faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were modeling and put it really pretty, but after we were there like a few months later, I was sitting down on Sunday morning over there and I heard the Lord saying, okay, uh, why are you waiting to move to get to a new place? So the next day we were like already in another place talking with a lady across the street that she had a church and she let us use her church uh, for a year. So we were there for like two or three months. And then in the next place uh, that we rented and shared this space in the church, our service were at 3 p.m. on that other place. Mm -hmm. We were there for a year. Mm -hmm. And then finally, after a year, I told the Lord, Lord, we want our own place. And after a year in 2014, in, in a mirac miraculous way, we were able to rent our own place. Praise God. And it was, I have to say, say this testimony because I read a book during that year and, and, and I saw this pastor that he invested $75,000 in a place and people were like saying, why are you going to invest $75,000 in a place that is not yours? And he said, well, it's not mine, but what I'm there, uh, God's people is going to be there and I want the best for them. Mm -hmm. And I told the Lord, Lord, I don't have $75,000, but if you give it to me, <laughs> I'll, I'll surely I invest it. So when we go to this place, it was it, it's such big miracles that the owner gave us the chairs, gave us uh, everything ready. And he said the previous people that were he here invested around $50,000 wow. plus mm -hmm. when he gave everything was given, desks, computers, uh, it, it was ready. When we had everything up, it was about $75,000. Wow, praise God. So God <laughs> provided everything and we started there and then from there, every year the church started multiplying yes. into where we are right now. That is a church of hundreds of people that come to our place and, and God has shown up and provided Amen. for Amen. that. And I know you redid the place where you're at now. You've invested money yes. in redoing it. <laughs> in 2019, we moved to this new place that we are right now. You were there with yes, Pastor beautiful. Frank. Mm -hmm. And we job. experienced like, a, what we said it's like a, a revival that we have in, within, in our church because everybody who goes since they, even in the, in the parking lot or when they open the door and the front door, they say they can feel the presence of the yeah. Lord walking in. Mm -hmm. And many people is getting saved, miracles, we experience miracles all the time. And it is a 
powerful worship and the heavens are open and to God be the glory everything that we have been experiencing in our church I mean one of the things that we are looking for is hosting his presence and by his grace uh, we can experience it every Sunday there or every time we get together amen mm. amen so do you have a favorite scripture me gusta uno que es el, está en el Salmo 139, no sé si She said, I like one which is in uh, Psalm 139. Yes, que habla, que habla lo que es la, la, la mujer que fue creada por Dios, que somos maravillosas, que todo Dios lo hace bueno, que lo hace bonito y que somos su creación. No, uh, that Psalm speaks about the woman, mm -hmm. how wonderful it's made, and how, uh, uh, ¿qué, ¿qué otra cosa dijiste? Que, que, que somos creación de que él creation. nos creó Actually, they, you know, like, que desde like el vientre yeah. que desde el vientre de nuestra madre él nos creó y que nos hizo maravillosas yeah how how God created from the womb of our mothers mm -hmm. and from there he make us wonderful and he's actually talking to the woman yes yeah yes. so she loved that that's one that's beautiful yes. that's good well I have many but uh, throughout my life in ministry mm -hmm. there's been a, a, a I could say a verse in the Bible that God have told me a few times, more than once, already like four times, and and it was uh, for nothing we wor be worried, mm -hmm. and come with me with every prayer and petition, or every petition, mm -hmm. and bring it to me in prayer with thanksgiving, yes. and He will give us peace that is above all our understanding, yes. and that has become a. a I could say like a stone for me or, or a foundation because being in ministry many times we get worried or in this life many things we are worried because of the things that are happening and we experience around us and people ask me if you do something different what would you do different if you start again and I told them not worry too much because I have learned that always God will meet me with my needs around yes. the corner even though I'm not seeing them. Yes. So I have worried about, God, you promised this, you said this, you told us that you're gonna open the door, you told us that you're gonna provide, I'm not seeing it right now. But it's because it's not for right now. Mm -hmm. And yes. doing that, yes. I'm leaving something that is not for the now. And I'm not enjoying the presence because I'm leaving the future that is not happening yet. So God told me, enjoy the process. Yes. And don't worry so much. I mean, I'm doing something now. Probably you're looking for something in the future. Uh -huh. And sometimes in our family, sometimes in, in our marriage, sometimes in ministry, or whatever we're working on, uh, we are always looking for the future, but not enjoying the presence. And we will worry about the future when God is doing something now. Yes. So the Lord has to told me that like four times already. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and now That's I good. ask, it, don't tell me anymore, please. <laughs> I know I, I'm going to be trying to be at peace and knowing that you have the control. Amen. That's a, that's yes. a great word. So much worry because of so much that's going on today in the world, like mm -hmm. you said, and we have to keep our eyes on Jesus because yes. he will never leave us or forsake us and he will be faithful to the end. He will supply all of our needs. It yes. says in his mm -hmm. word, according to his riches, and he owns all the cattle on the hill. So he's going to supply everything that we need mm -hmm. over and above. So that's a great word. Well, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in today. Thank you for coming to Ohio. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you again uh, in Texas. And, yes. and, and we again want to invite the people to come to your church uh, one more time. Uh, Casa yes. de Casa de Dios. Dios. Our church is Casa de Dios, Cielos Abiertos. And we are in 206 North Highway 360, Grand Prairie, Texas. And this is Dallas area. And you can call us if you need any information to a one seven a zero five zero six zero one, and or you can check us in our webs in YouTube or in uh, uh, the website in uh, YouTube or Facebook. Facebook. You can check myself yeah. Juan Cáceres, Pastor Juan Cáceres, in YouTube or Facebook or our church Casa de los Cielos Abiertos in YouTube or Facebook. We put out there every Sunday, every message that we preach, everything else there. And people can use it for whatever they want. I mean, if they want to preach it again, if they're a pastor <laughs> looking at us. <laughs> 
or wow. if they, they you know we have a lot of testimony of people just being watching the tv mm. and receiving the impartation of the holy spirit that's right you told me you're not on christian tv you're on telemundo yes what we're time on tell them yes. what time are you on yeah telemundo? we're in telemundo uh, every sunday uh eight in the morning in telemundo 39 telemundo 39 which is a uh, latino secular media mm -hmm. Uh, and it's a, one of the most popular media, media mm -hmm. in the uh, U.S. And every night at 1 in the morning. Every night. Every, every night, night from wow. Monday to Saturday. Saturday only at 12. <laughs> but it, that was a miracle too because we only have one day in secular media and we pray. And they came to us and they put the program every wow. night without us asking them. Praise God. So we're there. <laughs> yes. uh, just look at us in, in the website or internet, or whatever. We're there with all the media so they can watch. That's so awesome. Yes. Because you're bringing in the lost, the yes. people that don't watch church TV. But that's awesome. That's well, what we want to be. We want to yes. be in that area, you know, to, to reach uh, the lost. Yes. Mm -hmm. In that, in that uh, hour, too. Yes. In that hour, yeah. Right. Yeah, we have a lot of testimony, like at one in the morning, mm -hmm. we have her people have come to our church that they were like, something just told them to turn the TV, go through the screen, and they saw, like, there you know, are. they saw us <laughs> preaching, yeah. and they were going through a crisis. Oh, yes. And the word that I was preaching that day, or it was in that era, right, in that day, right. it was what they needed. Praise God. So, That's so cool. The only guy can do that. <laughs> yes, amen. Yes. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. May He Thank continue you. to bless your ministry, your amen. family, and supply over and above what you need. And thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless amen. you for watching us today. May God supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. And don't worry, right? The word today, don't worry. Yes. Don't yes. worry. Don't Keep your worry. eyes on Jesus. Yes. <laughs> amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you.